Well, I, I was trained as a structural geologist because I like going in the field and looking at structures. And when I started teaching, um, my boss was a, a guy called Neville Price, who was a bit disorganized as a lecturer compared with John Ramsey, but I found him ten times more stimulating because he kept asking me to put numbers on things. How fast did this fall grow, etc. And he asked us, two or three of us started teaching at the same time, said, what do you think is going to be different in structural geology? Uh, and I said, I think discontinuities are going to become much more important than they're recognized now. And that's one of the few correct predictions I've ever made. <laughs> so that now the whole focus in structural geology, I mean, a guy like John Suppy from Princeton, looks at folds in Taiwan and elsewhere and says basically every fold is due to an irregularity on a fault. Whereas we used to think faults were just a bit annoying. They sort of carved up the continuity of these beautiful flowing structures in the earth, which turned out to be not that important in terms of accommodating displacement. Mm -hmm. So I, if I had to define my concept of structural geology, I'd say it's about understanding displacements in the Earth's crust, how they occur, why, how often, and so on. And the Tohoku earthquake is a pretty good example of just how important one increment movement can be when you've got up to 50 meters of displacement in one earthquake rupture. That's amazing. Over 100,000 square kilometers. Wham. Uh, Overpressure fluids always involve? Probably not. But in some tectonic settings, they almost certainly are. And I suspect they affect fault stability just as much, if not more, than the buildup of shear stress. So we're trying to evaluate the relative contributions of the, to failure. The different cycling mechanisms, fluids and stress. Uh, and it's jolly interesting because there are very simple minded sort of models of block sliders and frictional instability in most seismologists' head. But they're beginning to realize that, you see, if the fluid pressure is cycling, then you're changing the fault strength through the cycle as well as the stress because uh, <clears throat> what's called the effective stress, the stress minus the fluid pressure, is what determines the strength of the fault. And so both of these things may help determine recurrence intervals. And the, the obvious area to work where we're most sure that fluids are involved are uh, the gigantic earthquakes that occur on subduction megathrusts, which I think the evidence is very convincing that they are very strongly fluid over pressure wherever they are active. We're developing ideas on the cycle of the fluid pressure around these structures as well, and they may contribute to some of the rather peculiar behavior that's been recognized in the last 10 years non-volcanic tremor is what the Japanese call it. And that occurs around the base of the megathrust seismogenic zone. So it's an active field and I'd like to make the point that we, we got there by looking at rocks. And uh, rocks provoke the question. We now know that earthquakes, earthquake rupturing is involved in a lot of crustal displacement. So if you want to understand structural geology, you have to understand a bit about earthquakes. And as a corollary, I would say that seismologists should really think of themselves as structural geologists, and I sometimes congratulate them on making the transition to doing something useful.